Hello. Oh. Um, yeah, I've got a slightly different perspective. Um, I, I am Jewish, and um, what's possibly more, uh, well, particularly relevant uh, in this context is that um, I'm in a reform community. Um, I was uh, involved before in a Mazorti community, which um, I don't know how much you guys know about different branches of Judaism, but the most traditional kind of Judaism that hasn't changed or, well, that's the theory, that's a, another discussion, is uh, Orthodox Judaism. Uh, and in the UK, the most um, kind of modern slash radical slash liberal form of Judaism is actually called liberal Judaism. Um, and then uh, next to Orthodox, you've got um, what here is called Masorti, and in the US is called the conservative movement. And next to that, you've got reform. And there's not a lot of difference between reform and liberal. It's just for some historical reasons, there's, there's two different branches that do more or less the same thing. So um, there were some, I mean, Judaism is structured, I, I would say more similarly to Islam than it is to Christianity in that there's Jewish law, um, which has been developed over the centuries by rabbis um, and the dialogue between the rabbis uh, that the Jewish law originally was was developed through is is called the Talmud, uh, which is one of our holy texts and its commentaries on uh, the uh, material in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, and then, uh, but it, it doesn't end there. The tradition of um, developing uh, Jewish law is, is ongoing um, and it, it happens through uh, rabbinic scholarship. Um, an Orthodox Judaism uh, it tends to be um, sort of conservative with a small c in uh, interpreting those those laws, but that doesn't um, mean that the other branches of Judaism don't have a, any relationship to Jewish tradition and Jewish law. Um, Mazorti uh, have a relationship to it which is uh, pretty binding, but um, it's... Uh, slightly more sort of aiming to change with the times um, and uh, reform Judaism it, it, so it, there's a concept in reform Judaism called um, informed choice which is basically it's your job as an adult Jew of either gender to understand Jewish tradition understand Jewish law um, have explored it yourself and then to make a choice about if it's meaningful for you to follow it or not, uh, which means that a lot of um, religious reform Jews, actually, there's a lot of Jewish law that they intentionally are not following. Other bits and other people are following. So there's kind of a lot of diversity there. Um, as it pertains to the position of, of women, um, there's a few things, I'll, I'll give you a few examples of, um, so like in the traditional service in an Orthodox synagogue and in some Masorti or conservative services too, well, Masorti in the UK certainly, um, men and women uh, do not sit together. Uh, women um, are usually traditionally in, in a gallery, um, so they just look down on the service because it's, considered like it's not sort of tempting for them to see the men, but it could be tempting for the men to see women. That's the reason. Um, women cannot lead the service. Um, there's a principle called kol isha, which is, is Hebrew for the voice of a woman. Um, and the principle of kol isha is basically that um, it could be sort of sexually arousing for a man to hear a woman lead a religious service because her voice is sexually arousing. Um, and that is the main principle behind not allowing that. Um, there's also another principle called kavod had sibor, which means um, the honor of the congregation. And the, it, for example, kavod had sibor is related to why you can't have like an eight year old child who has not been bar mitzvah to lead a service because it's a sen there's a sense of like shame that there was no, uh, qualified adult Jew present to do that for them. And um, traditionally, women were seen as a bit more like children, and therefore uh, you wouldn't have a woman lead a service because it makes your entire congregation look quite incompetent. Um, so these are the sort of principles um, that, that are driving the, the way that a traditional 
Jewish services set up according to Jewish law. Um, Masorti, some Masorti congregations are very much like that. Others are more like reform congregations in that men and women um, do sit together. There's also, um, so the traditional division between the men's section and the women's section is called a mechitza. And it's also possible to set up um, like a service to try and involve everybody. So you have a men's section, a woman's section, and a mixed section. So people can completely choose. That's called a trichitza, just in case anyone desperately wants to know that. Um, <laughs> so um, in the... Uh, yeah, and, and again, in, in Reform Judaism, women can uh, participate fully leading the prayers. Um, we have women rabbis. Um, we the, There's a lot in Jewish law about um, the kind of the duties, the, the mitzvot that um, apply to adult Jews and traditionally adult Jewish men. Um, in conservative Judaism, and this is also true for Masorti, uh, basically, the obligation is the same towards Jewish law once you're past your bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah age. Um, but um, in Reform Judaism, the sense of obligation isn't really there. So that's not... Um, yeah, it's a sort of different relationship to the law entirely, I, I, I suppose you could say. Um, what else was I going to say? Okay. <laughs> um, so um, the situation that, that you tend to get in a reform community, uh, it, I, I think it's very much, it, I mean, I am a feminist and I feel um, it, the, a lot of these issues are very kind of important to me and I think it's very important to understand um, why things are the way they are traditionally and then to kind of examine the principles behind them. And in my reform community, for example, we talk about these issues. And so uh, I, I, I teach Jewish Sunday school, Cheda, um, and we talk about how Kol Isha is perhaps not a useful concept to apply in that way for us because, you know, in our community, we're out mixing in, you know, a multi-gender environment in the outdoor in, in, in the outside world uh, away from the service and so it will be a bit artificial to set up um, a completely different standard within a religious service and also uh, there are um, parts of Jewish law that relate to um, you know if some if say a man is um, thinking about I don't know improper things in the middle of a religious service he should probably control his thoughts and so you can also talk about that um, again, like with Kvot it's it's not a relevant concept when you can have like a top female lawyer or, you know, prime minister or like, why couldn't then a woman lead a, a congregation? It, it doesn't really um, make a lot of sense within that context. Um, yeah, I think one, one more thing I did want to add um, is, um, so... There's a concept in Judaism called Taharat Mishpacha, which is usually translated into English as family purity. I don't like that translation, but basically it's around um, uh, sort of sexual relations after what, when women are menstruating and shortly afterwards. Um, and one of the sort of key features of, of that um, is the mikvah, which is... Uh, it's like a pool that's used ritually by men and women at certain times and most famously by women at the end of um, that that period, sort of after her period when um, when she's c completely stopped bleeding. Um, she will go into the mikvah and then resume sexual relations with her husband. And um, it, it's very difficult for reform women who find that meaningful after they've... Uh, you know, explored that through informed choice, say. Um, it's very difficult for them to actually get access to a mikvah because um, in this country, uh, mikvot are pretty much all under orthodox auspices and they would ask a lot of questions about, you know, is this woman of the right parentage or conversion? Um, 
has she followed uh, the right number of days, you know, since menstruation so that she's, as it were, qualified to enter the mikvah and so on. Um, there is a mikvah in the Sternberg Centre, which is the rabbinical training college for non-Orthodox rabbis um, in the UK. Uh, it's only open for conversion. It's not like it's very difficult to get the key to that if you want to observe Taharat Mishpacha um, and you're not Orthodox. So uh, I think, you know, on the other side of things, somebody who's um, part of a non Orthodox community that finds some of these parts of Jewish tradition meaningful, they can find themselves quite blocked um, when trying to explore them. Um, yeah, I think I'll hand over to Katrina now. Okay.